Thank you, and thank you very much. Yes, I ordered the taxi yesterday, and yes, it's as, as usual in Brussels. You can order a taxi the day before, and they just forgot it. <laughs> and then uh, you have to wait like another 50 minutes to get the next one. And I was unfortunately this time, as I usually at Schumann's, which was the wrong place. <laughs> it was really a mess. Um, okay, so. Just starting about, uh, and it was quite interesting to hear because I have maybe some of those examples as well in my presentation. There is one thing um, which we should address. So there are at least two business, two business challenges, which is big data and cloud computing, uh, which we can address within the next few years. And uh, due to, and that's, I need my glasses because I never can remind the numbers, due to IDC, they expect between 2010 and 15, in the fifth, five largest European economies, around 763 billion euro uh, revenue. And it, it might be, and it could enhance to nearly one trillion euro in GDP and four million new jobs. Maybe the, the, the numbers are a bit high, uh, but there's a huge expectation, um, but that needs as well the right policy framework, and I will talk about this as well a bit. Um, next. So there's a mistake, it's application domains and not something else. So we were, you also were addressing those application domains. So whatever you have when you have cloud, you have uh, a huge operational model which is ready to go for either private, hybrid or public clouds. It is, uh, comes with uh, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, platform as a um, platform as a service. So this is already what you have, but it always, and it's because it's not a technology stack, uh, it's an operational model and it has to include also an organizational change um, for those doing business. So there are a couple of um, application domains with different requirements on the cloud. Uh, so just to name a few, cities are the next, next major huge, huge uh, users of cloud. Uh, the public sector um, is going, and I will talk to Bauer about that a bit later, going uh, to push the cloud adoption. Health has also specific requirement, energy, um, as well. These are all based as well on partially critical infrastructures. So having said that, um, we have to address at the moment still um, cer certain points which hinder the adoption of clouds. Um, and one thing is because what you have, you don't have one big European cloud, as was mentioned somewhere earlier by uh, Commissioner Cruz, you will have a maybe virtual European cloud, but you have a lot of different clouds which are interconnected. What does it mean? You need interoperability on each level. Uh, what does it mean in addition? Not only interoperability, um, but also when you want to use a cloud service from one pro in one cloud and you move to some other place, you want to have a single sign-on. So you use as need as well to have interoperable security. One thing what is happening here is there are a lot of cloud standards already available. Uh, Etsy has done uh, the uh, publishing the through the cutting through the jungle of standards. Um, these standards uh, are driven by use cases, and the use cases are driven by application domains, so that it's easier to identify which standards are valuable for which environments. But anyhow, any you know that standards alone I don't pro prove interoperability, because the standards are quite huge. 
uh, and allowing a lot of interpretation. So what you are going to do then is to have profiles. What you need to do as well is having interoperability running in different test beds to demonstrate that things are running. Um, it's it's uh, for that one. It's because it's very important that even if you move from one cloud to the other cloud, uh, that you have a service continuity and you have a seamless change between the providers. Uh, the second thing hindering going into the cloud is security, and it's still worse. So we had a small boom where as well as MEs just easily went to the um, cloud because uh, they had a quite quick uh, usage of infrastructure. But nowadays, and uh, that was due to Snowden, and uh, I heard on Tuesday morning, uh, I was two days on a security conference, so I might be much related to security this time. It's still my head. Uh, what Cruz was saying, Snowden was a wake-up call, and uh, what we have, the response, uh, shall be action now. Um, that means uh, what, what is necessary um, is really to address the safety and privacy protection and to make sure that uh, you have the control and the access rights well done. Also, this goes beyond, uh, or goes in the direction when you look at security, uh, that you have uh, availability and your systems running all the time. What is to say here is, in terms of security, we have a lot of security mechanisms already in, available. Uh, the question is why it's not that much used. And that uh, comes again back to the case that um, there is a need to have them easier to use, like plug and play instruments and not having all difficulties with different cards and encryption keys to do so. But there is a way that we need more innovation in using and applying security um, in our environment. The third big barrier is uh, a legal barrier. One thing is data protection, uh, but that's not the only thing. It's also um, the other way that you have to store certain data are not allowed to leave the country. So you have to have what I would call a jurisdiction-aware infrastructure um, due to the different places and to the different nations we have here in Europe. There is uh, no harmonization on all legal um, recommendations, so um, there is a request to make or to build more trust to look at that, a thing which is called jurisdiction aware infrastructure. So, what are the challenges from the user? Uh, the user going to cloud is very easy because they don't have to think about. Uh, buying uh, and maintaining uh, licenses, uh, uh, maintaining infrastructures, um, updating soft or hardware or change hardware to new hardware. Um, that's going with the economy of sale. Um, they don't have huge investments as they can use the pay as you go. Um, if there is a real cloud environment and it's not just a small, small cloud, uh, they have as well uh, a huge scalability and flexibility. Uh, as cloud services are in a way standardized, if you say infrastructure, platform, or software as a service, they can use standardized services. Um, you have uh, a huge uh, potential here for um, small and medium companies to go quickly to the market, to adapt, to bring quickly new services to the market and to the cloud market 
which are more easier and more quicker than any huge companies which can quick, better adapt to new requirements. Um, and you have uh, in the cloud uh, better security, that's for sure, because what you have in your own data center, you always have to manage new attacks, new worms. So what you have in these data centers in general is a better security. From the pro provider perspective, uh, providing business process as a service or software as a service, uh, what I said beforehand, so it's much easier for SMEs to go into the market and provide new services. Um, that reduces also the time to market and it, it reduces also the barriers to the entry to the market because you don't have uh, to get huge investments by banks with huge business plans. You can go much quicker with less cost and you can, it could be more, you can take more risks. Um, and you don't, at that time as well, you don't have to think of managing your IT infrastructure. Uh, for the operator, and that comes for the platform and infrastructure as a services, you have a new role now in the IT market. And here we come also to the example of uh, the marketplace, which is a, a, a thing I, I, I believe a huge uh, new investment what people are taking. If you look at cities, uh, you have marketplaces in cities where cities can provide not only services for citizens, but where also um, users can provide new applications like app stores for the cities, uh, which then can get revenues as well um, for the infrastructure. Um, and you can buy and outsource the infrastructure. So coming again here, what you have, but what you need to have here is, if you look at the different points of clouds, um, you need to have here something, I'm not sure it's a new word or is it an old word or is it a new buzzword, what, what they call converged infrastructures uh, or smart infrastructures. Um, because what you need here then as well is you have to have the interoperability between the different infrastructures uh, which makes sure that as well and the platform as a services which makes sure that you can develop apps and push them as well to the other infrastructures and can easily connect to the different infrastructures. Uh, coming back to uh, the right policy framework, uh, what I have addressed before, um, there was um, in 2011, Neely Cruz uh, initiated the European Cloud Strategy and her action plan, um, where they where they provided the first view on cloud uh, as a driver for innovation and, and the public sector, which is the hugest or largest IT buyer um, to go in the direction of adapting more the cloud. So what I was saying before is that, you, um, that they have already instantiated working groups uh, which are related to uh, standards because there are too, so many that no one knows exactly how to use them. That is a, the standards is especially a problem uh, as well for SMEs because they cannot really go through all the standards. Um, the second thing which is uh, very important here is the discussion and the, uh, on certification schemes. Um, as, you, as you might have heard uh, or as you might know, there is a certification will, is handled as one, one, one piece of trust. Um, so they are working on certification schemes and certification is always discussed in two ways. One way describing certification um, is that it is expensive 
for companies to provide these certification schemes and to run the, through the certification schemes. On the other hand, they start to discuss about having self-certification uh, and kind of code of conduct so that then you can be able to have a matter of trust. Um, that leads to the code of conduct, uh, which is a self-certificate that you follow all the rules on data protection uh, and the possibility for auditing. Um, they have the cloud expert group, which did a, a first document on um, the cloud research. And uh, they have the cloud partnership uh, steering board which has uh, recently launched the Trusted Cloud for Europe. And one of the projects uh, there is a Cloud for Europe, and I will talk a bit about that on a several purpose. Um, so saying that is if you, if you just bring the government to use cloud, what you do then is, okay, Good. <laughs> what, you use, uh, what you do then is really uh, to get a faster adoption of cloud because you have a huge market uh, and, you have and you can foster the small and medium enter enterprises to really bring in new services as well for the public sector. So I don't go in that into details, um, but that is exactly uh, a part that on the European, the users then could be able to use cloud services with a confident, uh, knowing that the European legal norms and international standards are met. That's what I call the jurisdiction of their infrastructure. So when you provide cloud services, and I believe that is a really step forward that was also discussed in the last two days on the Secure Cloud Conference. You need to have um, a certainty also on the legal constraints, and that's not only for the public sector, but this goes also very well um, to big companies, uh, because they have to do that. Um, a small thing on the Cloud for Europe project, uh, which is a collaboration between public authorities and industry using pre-commercial procurement. And why I say this here is how to bring, the next word is how to bring innovation into cloud, not only into the public sector. So we work for the public sector, but we use the instrument um, of pre-commercial procurement. No, that was, so what is pre-commercial procurement? <laughs> It's tendering R&D. So the slides, I, I believe the slides are online and if you have any questions you can, can ask me. So I don't want to go to, in too much detail for that. But that is really one thing is, so the public sector is going to learn about more about cloud. So it's one is on education, the pu public sector about cloud. So that they can do more procurement on clouds. The second thing is that industry will get money for R&D, new services. And as I told you before, taking just the example of security, um, there is a lot of security available which is not used, but what you need is a plug and play of security tools. So there could be one thing is getting innovation, just trying to tender those kinds of things uh, to get a better and easier to use results. And piloting, the result is a pilot, Piloting thing also, and that's what you, what I heard you already did, is a way you get trust. I skip this. Um, uh, I have just then the two last slides. Um, the huge challenge is for cloud computing and big data uh, is, I believe, smart cities. So where you have the interconnection of different um, identities in the city, of mobility, um, of safety, um, of energy, um, which all comes together in one, in one thing and is not, as usually in others, siloed 
and not interconnected. Um, so what we have then is if we have this kind of clouds, and I borrowed that slide from a colleague of mine who is working in several of the FEPPP and the other project, uh, just to make sure I don't have to read around. Don't look at the details of that figure, but the point is here what you have, you have the different clouds. And what, imagine now if you have these different clouds, um, and they are, some of them are certified and some of them are not certified, and some of them offer services which can be used in the other clouds. Uh, so what you need here is, and you talk about the broker beforehand, I talk also about a broker, but I talk about a broker like a, an entity managed on a European level where all, where all clouds are registered uh, with a description um, if they are certified or not certified, what offers they are provide. Um, to have as well a cross-border um, exchange of not only information and data, but also of services and applications. I, I thank you for your attention.